A one and a half inch scale Alchin Royal Chester traction engine renovation, part 17, making a water lifter hose for the traction engine. Machining the brass parts in the lathe and drilling the holes in the water inlet filter using a very non-engineering approach. Some viewers may be thinking, why use a non-engineering approach? My answer to that is, if you're a beginner, it's very good for you. It's quite important to get a feel for the job, and that's what I'm showing here. All I'm doing is making a couple of small brass fittings to fit on the end of this piece of plastic conduit. The first fitting is the water lifter filter. And once the turning part of the job is finished, I'll be drilling a lot of holes in this. On the full size, this acts as a filter and stops the pickup of foreign objects from the water supply, which could likely have been a stream, a river, or even a horse trough. This water lifter hose in the application it's going to be used for is purely cosmetic. The traction engine does not have a boiler certificate and it's going to be used mainly as an ornament. But I thought I would make one that actually works. The piping job starts by cutting the end of it nice and square. I had to actually come inboard to stop the pipe from crushing under the weight of the blade. I'd like to take this opportunity to mention that there's going to be a slight change in the frequency of the videos. Making these short videos takes me four hours every day, and that's just the editing and voicing over. I've been trying to make a video every day. In fact, when I think about it, I haven't been on holiday for about seven years. The good news is, though, I'm going to be making the videos longer. Not every day, but the ones I make will be longer. In this clip, I'm cleaning up the end of the piece of plastic pipe on a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. Then it's back to the turning. With reference to the frequency of the videos, I'm now going to be making longer videos, but not one every day. I'm sorry about this, but it's the only way it can be. We're all in the same boat and the cost of living crisis also affects me. Despite at the end of every video, when I say if you want the videos longer, watch them back to back on the playlists, I still get viewers writing in saying the videos are too short. Anyway, back to the job. The only measuring equipment I'm going to use is my micrometer just to check the outside diameter of the actual piece of plastic that forms the hose. When I typed traction engine water lifter hose into the Google search engine, quite a few came up. Some of them had really nice cast ends for the water filter and a lot of the model ones, mainly for larger scales than I'm working on, use exactly the same type of pipe that I'm using, only bigger. The water pipe on my large 4.5 scale showman's engine is just a piece of rubber pipe. A while ago on one of Fred Dimner's excellent programs, he went to a factory where they actually made pipes like this, and I was surprised to see what a long and complicated operation it was. I think it's part of the series Made in Britain, where Fred went around England on his traction engine with his friend. This is the only part of the video where I'm using any measuring equipment. My micrometer has been used to measure the outside diameter of the hose. And I need to turn down one end of this piece of brass to fit into the hose. The other end needs to be the same diameter, more or less, as the outside diameter of the hose. Here's the job so far. I now need to turn this part around in the chuck and remove the excess brass that I don't need. And the easiest way to do this is to just part it off. I'm using a very thin parting tool blade and it's not on centre height. So once the tool had gone almost all the way through, I knocked off the excess with a soft hammer. When I reduce the speed of the clip, I reduce the speed of the audio so it sounds very low. The next part of the job is to round the end, and again I'm doing this freehand. I don't have a ball turning tool, so I'm just using what I would term the etch-a-sketch method by turning both of the handles simultaneously to form the rounded end of the part. Once I've got a nice curvature on the end of the piece of brass, I use the file to further smooth it out. And don't forget, when you're filing in the lathe, Keep the file away from the chuck and make sure the file has a handle. After the filing comes the emery cloth, followed by a piece of Scotch-Brite and now it looks like this. 
I turn the grooves in the part that goes in the pipe to hold it in position. The other groove is just decorative. You'll see what I do with this later on in the video. As I was making this part, I thought I would need to stick it in position using some super glue, but it stuck in position quite well without any form of adhesive. As I showed earlier on in the video, I bought this pipe via eBay. It was a one meter length, and I'm now cutting it to the size that I need to make a loop that hangs on the traction engine. All will be revealed at the end of this video. I'm now going to make a fitting for the other end. When I went to the steam workshop, I had a look at an Alchin traction engine that was complete with a water lifter hose. And the assembly at the end where it fastens to the traction engine was very complicated. Every bit of the turning in this video is 100% freehand. Luckily, I have quite a good photographic memory. And before coming into the workshop, I looked at the fitting on the traction engine and took a mental snapshot. So now I'm working blind really, I'm turning this fitting and hoping it's going to be the same size as the one on the traction engine. In fact, preferably slightly larger. Turning the correct diameter on the part that fits inside the tube was easy. I just remembered the numbers on the cross slide. Now I've turned the part around in the chuck and I've machined away quite a lot of the brass until I get it the size that I need it to be. It is surprising, the more you do these freehand jobs, the better you get at it. I was born on January the 5th, 1953, which was the year of Queen Elizabeth's coronation. And by Queen Elizabeth, I mean Queen Elizabeth II. Not the first, I am not that old. Today is January the 5th, 2023, and I've reached the ripe old age of 70. Three score and ten, I really can't believe it, I do not feel 70 years old. The strange thing about me, even though I look 70 years old, I am big and fat and very grey, but internally I am actually driven by a young, athletic midget. And thankfully my brain still works, well, most of the time anyway. In this clip I am using an end mill to cut a recess in the end of this fitting. This will take an o-ring. I'm using a 5 16ths of an inch diameter end mill with four cutting flutes. It's not perfect, but it will do the job. Don't forget, all I'm really making is a dummy water lifter pipe. I need to round the ends of this fitting, so first of all I'm using a chamfer tool on the outside. And here I'm threading a hole down the centre. I didn't mention it, but the drill that I was using was tapping size for 3 16ths by 40 threads per inch. As you can clearly see in this clip, I'm rotating the chuck manually. I don't want to snap off the tap in the hole. Here's a bit of unorthodox non-engineering. Once I'd threaded the hole, before I removed the tap, I took the entire thing out of the chuck, turned it round, gripped it by the tap, I used a chamfer tool on this end as well, followed by a file to round it off. Here it is fitted to the plastic tube, and the o-ring on the bench is going to go in the end of this. Let the fun begin. This is the other end, and it's no good at all when it's solid. It doesn't look right. I'm going to drill a lot of holes in this, and I'm purposely not going to use the rotary table. I want some errors so that it looks a bit like a casting. I'm going to use this Proxon mini mot drill in the Proxon drill stand. And once again, I will mention I am not sponsored by Proxon or anyone else. It's time for a top tip. Before commencing the job, it's a good idea to practice. So I'm practicing using a small piece of brass to see how accurately I can cross drill it. To be honest, the first hole was okay. And so was the second. Unfortunately though, I need to drill quite a lot more than two holes in the main piece of brass. And I do know for a fact that errors will creep in, but I have a solution. Here's the proper part in the drill. The job starts by drilling two holes next to each other, like you've just seen in the test piece. And once again, this was quite successful and fairly accurate. I stuck another twist drill in the hole to make sure it was at 90 degrees 
But before the drill went very deep, I did remove the drill that was in the cross hole. After carefully drilling the second of the second set of holes, there are now eight holes in total in the piece, but I need twice as many as this. I've repositioned the piece of brass in the machine vise, and now hopefully I'm going to be able to drill holes in between the existing ones. And then here's a secret. I need to roughen up these holes, bring them into line and make them look like the cast. And yes, I agree it's not perfect, but it looks okay. Please bear in mind this part is very small indeed, and any errors look much worse than they actually are. Here you can see why I turned the groove in the body of the brass piece. I filled it in using a sharpie felt tip pen. Now to look at the fitting at the other end of the pipe. I need to fit a 5 16 of an inch outside diameter O-ring into the 5 16 outside diameter recess in the fitting. A while ago I bought a few of these. They are very small tubes of super glue and very useful. I'm applying some of this to the O-ring. Then I'm going to stick the O-ring in place in the fitting. Now all I need are a couple more O-rings. These are not very good O-rings, they're not steam grade, they're just silicone O-rings. You can see here what I need them for. Just to help form the water lifter hose into a roll. So it can be hung on the side of the bunker tank. Very much like this in fact. I think it looks okay. This is the water lifter inlet. That could be threaded 3 16 by 40 threads per inch. To take a piece of threaded pipe, then the water lifter hose would screw onto this. But I doubt if it's going to be used in this application. As you can see, my guesswork was good for the size of the fitting. And that is it for this video. Don't forget it's longer than the normal ones. I'm about to go into birthday mode, so that's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll play out the video with some clips of the traction engine running. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.